candle enthusiast. Killer clowns from outer space. Sometime back in the early 1990s, I was snooping around my father's VHS movie collection. And this wasn't just a shelf of movies up on the wall. This was a vault of cinema, wall to wall to wall movie video cassettes. And I was looking for something that I probably shouldn't have been watching, just like the comic books that I shouldn't have been reading. Uh, and I found a, a doozy, killer clowns from outer space. I was curious, I was terrified. I think like any five or six year old would be, but I was determined to watch this film. So I snuck it up to my bedroom, popped it into my beat up VCR, and I watched that film from beginning to end with my eyes this close to the television screen. And what played before me was the most insane spectacle of science fiction cinema I have probably seen to date. It didn't just have creatures from another world. It had cotton candy and popcorn, bubblegum, meteors falling from the night sky. It had a circus in the, the middle of the forest, out of all places. It had guns that would shoot popcorn at the, the victims. And, 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 and horrifyingly, there, there were these tiny little baby clown heads attached to umbilical cords, and they would try to eat you in the shower. I'm gonna highly recommend you put this film on your Netflix queue. You're gonna wanna see this. But the thing that really I, I loved the most about the film was it had the coolest clowns. Clowns that would stalk my nightmares and expand my imagination. That's right, that's right. The film was released in 1988, and when they put it on the shelf at the video rental store, it never came down. One could say that Killer Clowns outlived the, the video rental store movie house, because with each new and coming generation, there's young folks falling in love with this movie, uh, just the same way I did way back when. And in celebration of that, I have not one, but eight scented candles inspired by Killer Clowns from Outer Space, uh, produced by Eerie Candle Company. This is a small batch, handcrafted, and relatively brand new company in the candle industry. And I discovered these by surfing around on Instagram and I saw these posts of these candles. I'm like, wow, they look great. But then every picture said sold out, sold out, sold out. These things, they could not keep them in stock. So I reached out to Erie Candle Company. I said, hey, what's going on? What's going on with these candles? And they were gracious enough, generous enough to send me the entire collection for evaluation. This is not a sponsored video. I'm not being paid to say anything specific here, but I am going to take one candle at a time, put my nose inside the jar just like that, and pick this apart, break it down like you would see a, a sommelier break down a glass of wine. I'm going to tell you my notes, my breakdown, my sensory evaluation. But more important than that, I'm going to close my eyes. And I'm gonna dig back real deep and unlock the doors of childhood nostalgia. And hopefully by doing so, maybe you can unlock some of your own memories. This way we can create a little bit of smell-o-vision between you and myself. How does that sound? Well, I'm ready to go. So let the show begin. Candle number one. Bibbo's Freaky Fried Funnel Cakes. And on the label, we see Bibbo the clown, and he's holding a plate with a funnel cake on top. It looks like some piped vanilla frosting, at least it appears to be. You know, whether you're at uh, the county fair. A pig race, how about that? <laughs> it's only a minute long, but they say it's the most thrilling minute in sports history, so. At the circus or taking a stroll down the boardwalk, there's that ubiquitous smell 
of that sweet and savory warm vapors of funnel cake. It just, it pulls you in every time, right? But back in the day, I only remember one topping and that being powdered sugar. But these days, everything under the moon is dumped, poured and drizzled on top of these golden brown nests of fried cake batter. So the only question is, what is on Bibbo's menu tonight? There's only one way to find out. So right from the get-go, pecan, walnut, caramel, maple syrup, and there's some spice here. Freshly ground, fine cinnamon, but that spice is going to be balanced with some sweetness. We have that caramel maple syrup, but we also have this brown sugar that's going to cut that spice of the cinnamon just a little bit. So this is not that ordinary naked funnel cake. There's gonna be plenty of goodies adorned on top and probably some things inside the batter itself because this is making me think of like spiced cake or cakey spiced donut like the old fashioned coffee shops. Do you remember when Dunkin Donuts didn't smell like microwaved eggs? melted cheese. You had a huge wall of freshly baked donuts. There were so many choices. You had the cakey donuts and you had glazed donuts. And talking about the yeasty donuts, this is kind of pulling me in another direction. Sticky buns. Yes. TJ Cinnamons. These were perfectly firm on the outside sticky buns, but inside they were still dense and chewy, even a little bit raw. And on top of the sticky bun, the caramel, like we said, we had the walnut, tons of butter in this situation. And for the sake of being over specific, I'm gonna say margarine, yeah. A little bit of country crock happening inside this candle. Globs of vanilla frosting. Whatever that stuff is that they put on Cinnabon, that white stuff, God only knows. This candle is taking me there. If that wasn't nostalgic enough for you, I'm going to start naming some breakfast cereals. I'm going to do it. Close your eyes, try to remember the smell of Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Apple Jacks, Waffle Crisp, Cinnamon Cheerios. The batter element in this candle is really pulling me in the direction of oats, Cheerios, or if you want to think of Quaker oats and honey, why not? Honey, let's get some honey in there too. Honey buns, honey and brown sugar Teddy Grahams with that maple syrup, dare I say, yeah, I'll say, Eggo waffle. We're just trying to paint that portrait and Eggo waffles is a part of that portrait. All of that coming to my mind, into my third eye. And there's something else that I can't leave out. There, This has a pre-baked quality as well. And I don't mean like dry ingredients, like you know, all-purpose flour. Rather, when you pop open that can of Pillsbury dough. Oh yeah. And that puffy goodness spills all over the place. A little bit of yeastiness that's adding so much authenticity. When you step up to the food truck and place your order, this isn't outside the food truck. This candle is like being inside the food truck. A fully immersive funnel cake experience up close and personal. Bibbo's Freaky Fried Funnel Cakes. That's truly something special. Pour me a cup of coffee, light up this candle. Bliss. Pure, unadulterated bliss. I said it, I'm not ashamed of that. But for the sake of time, let's move on. Candle number two. Chubbies, <laughs> Chubbies, Chubbies. Chubby's Very Berry Bloodshake. Chubby, he's on the label here, and he's got that strawberry milkshake with the crazy straw that he uses in the film. He sticks it into the bulbous cotton candy cocoons and sucks the blood out of the mischievous teenagers. Strawberry milkshake? I can handle that. Let's see what this, let's see what, what Chubby has shaken. 
maraschino cherry, even a little bit of Luden's cherry cough drops, yeah. Strawberry, for sure, ice cream. So we are building very quickly that strawberry milkshake fribble. Now, I know a lot of you may not know Friendly's. They had this thing on the menu, the fribble, which must have been a gallon of strawberry ice cream with a splash of milk blended together. This thing would put you to sleep for like three days. Some cocoa notes, some chocolate notes. I think of chocolate ganache, or with that cherry and that chocolate, it starts to build this idea of the black forest cake. We also have Tootsie Roll. That is like the weirdest form of chocolate. I mean, it is chocolate, but this is the one that really got to me. Wendy's Frosty, the chocolate milkshake that was too thick, too viscous to drink with a straw. You had to use a spoon to eat this thing. But this is the thing that is crazy. If you would have come to me a few days ago and asked me what color plastic wear does Wendy's serve to their, their customers, like spoons and forks, I would be like, well, I don't know, white? But here's the thing, when I smelled this candle, and I'm going through that Rolodex of memories, images in my mind, and I find that Wendy's Frosty. I see the images, and one of those images is me in my aunt's car, young kid, I'm eating the Frosty with the spoon, and I see the spoon in my hand, and it's not white, it's that beige color. This is what's amazing about the power of aroma. It can pull out these memories that you would assume are long gone, things that you would never think about again. So when you have you know, completed that long, eventful night at the circus, take a stroll down the road and head into that 50s themed diner down the street, because that's where this has taken me, you know? It's that 50s diner sitting in one of those big booths with my friends. Jerry Lee Lewis is playing on the jukebox and everyone's eating burgers and fries, but I, I have my tumbler and tall glass of strawberry milkshake and maybe in this case there's some chocolate soft serve ice cream swirled in the center. This really is a treat of classic 50s diner persuasion. Chubby's Berry Berry Blood Shake. There it is. Let's move on. Candle number three. Spikey's Fluffy Pink Nightmare. All right, all right. Spikey's there and he's holding that paper cone with some pink cotton candy with those gnarly fingers trying to pry themselves out from within. And it looks like he could certainly use a haircut, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I think so. A pink nightmare. That sounds an awful lot like that pink aisle at KB Toys or Toys R Us. You know what I'm talking about. Prepare yourself for a massive gumball explosion. I bet you never thought someone would tell you that, but here we are. Penny candy, old fashioned, hubba bubba, bazooka joe, double bubble city, pink bubble gum. Those six foot tall coin operated gumball machines. You know, the, the massive ones that you would find in arcades. Well, go up to the top and remove the lid of that sphere and stick your head inside. Go on, close your eyes and do it. Stick your head inside like, like you're wearing a space helmet. Smell, smell it, that smell. It's not just the pink bubblegum core. It's that jaw-cracking, high-gloss, polished, hard candy outer shell. That compressed sugar. That's a much different aroma than the bubblegum. Think of a handful of chiclets. It's half crunch. It's nearly all crunch. And there's crunch happening here in Spikey's uh, Pink Fluffy Nightmare. Trading cards. When you got your hands 
on a pack of cards and you peeled back that wax paper, you would find that pink surprise. The stick of pink bubble gum. It wasn't so great to chew on. It was stale, it would crumble into a million pieces, but the smell is synonymous with comic book shops and the little tiny general markets down the street. Those cards would forever smell like that gum. I bet you if I got my Garbage Pail Kid collection out right now and smell those cards, they would smell just like that bubble gum. What is the flavor profile of bubble gum? Tell me. Most gum is made with artificial flavoring, but the key ingredients are orange, banana, cinnamon, vanilla, and wintergreen. I know. I was shocked too. There's more than just bubblegum here. Frosty's Blue Cream Soda. In fact, it could be just any blue cream. It doesn't even have to be blue cream soda. The point I'm trying to make is that this is a creamy, soft, fizzy, frothy sweetness. I don't wanna be saying anything like whipped cream or a Cool Whip. There's a creaminess here, but it's of this sparkling, fizzy soda quality. Another soda, Big Red. Not the gum, not Wrigley's, but the soda. It's an old-timey soda, and it actually tastes a whole lot like bubble gum. But I have to mention root beer. But just the suds on top. Pour yourself a cold glass of root beer. Skim off the head. Just the foam of the root beer. That creamy, crackling, fuzzy, and fluffy froth of cane sugar, CO2, and sweet root beer. It's the essence. And guess what some ingredients are in most root beers? Cinnamon, vanilla, wintergreen. You see what's happening here. It cross-references that bubble gum. So whether your fondest memories of bubble gum are Big League Chew, Punch and Juicy, Hubba Bubba Bubble Tape or the Bubble Jug, the Blow Pop, or even the, the pellets that came in the mini size juice cartons. This candle is bound to serve you up a lip smacking, beauty school dropout popping, good old fashioned sweet confection satisfaction. And he heard it here first. What is your favorite nostalgic childhood bubble gum? Leave that in the comments below because I want to know. I really do. But it's time to move on. Candle number four. Rudy's Party Poppin' Frenzy. On the label there, we see Rudy, and he's holding his bazooka. It's, it's ready, it's stocked, it's loaded with popcorn. Shoots it at the unwelcome patrons that come into the circus. Only this isn't just ordinary popcorn, but you're gonna have to see the movie for those details. Let's see what kind of popcorn Rudy's poppin'. Well, it turns out that that bazooka is very appropriate because this is a blast o butter and a jolly time. <laughs> but in all sincerity, this is insanely buttery. Unlike other popcorn-themed candles that just deal with the butter, this actually smells like sweet corn or freshly popped starchy kernels. Imagine taking an ear of corn and dunking it into a cauldron of melted butter and then eating it or smelling it, whatever you want to do with it. We really need to get specific here because there's so many different kinds of popcorn, but more importantly, there's so many different aromatic ways to experience popcorn. Kettle corn, microwave popcorn, movie theater butter popcorn, pre-bagged popcorn, vending machine popcorn, Disneyland, all of these different kinds. Cracker Jack, after heavy consideration, to me, this is a whimsical marriage of both the movie theater buttered popcorn flavoring, that golden elixir that they pump into our bucket of popcorn. How many pumps? One, two, you always feel self-conscious, right? That and that big old bag on Saturday night movie nights, you rip that open and you get graced in the face with that powder of savory, salty, butter goodness. This has Cineplex written all over it. I don't 
mean the big movie theaters today like AMC, Regal Cinemas, the Arclight Cinemas. No, I'm talking about the Cineplexes, the little tight spaces. You order your concessions, you walk down those dark catacombs, those little hallways that have carpeted ceilings and walls with the rainbow stripes on the floor. The arcade in the corner is hidden and buzzing with hot electricity. The AC is rattling up in the ceiling. And as you find your movie theater and you walk deeper and deeper down these hallways, that smell of popcorn is forever embedded in those walls. And Friday night, Saturday night, movie night, bowls of popcorn being passed around, and a stack of VHSs this high. It's warm, it's fresh, it beckons you. And if we have any wine enthusiasts joining in, I have a little candle and wine pairing for you to try out. Yes, you can do that. Rombauer Chardonnay, Farniente Chardonnay, and Stag's Leap Wine Cellar Chardonnay. Three Napa Valley Chardonnays that are self-admittedly buttery Chardonnays. And if you ask me, they're of high quality and not too expensive. Like these are affordable wines that you can buy and pair with a candle like this. You light this up, you pour yourself a glass of chilled Chardonnay, you make yourself a bowl of good quality popcorn, you pop on a movie. This truly will be uh, your companion for Friday night, Saturday night, movie night. Rudy's Popcorn Poppin' Frenzy. We gotta move on folks. Candle number five. Fatso's Sweet Scrumptious Surprise. He's holding a box of chocolates, a heart with a ribbon and a little bow. But what is the Scrumptious Surprise? So let's start with the mouth puckering mixed berries. Blueberries, craisins, and black cherry for days. This is why it's important that I'm so specific when I use adjectives to describe fruit like underripe, ripe, jammy, cooked down. The fruit in this is coming through as dried fruit. That concentration of the fruit, shriveled up black cherry, but it's in some kind of concoction, this thick, viscous syrup, like some higher quality black cherry sodas that I've had before. This really smells thick. So think of Grand Marnier or Chambord raspberry liqueur. There's lots of chocolate here. So uh, think about the chocolate covered cherries that oozes that liqueur when you bite into it. And I think that specifically is what Erie Candle is going for. Considering that they have the box of candy right there on the label. This is like a, an espresso. How we would explain how an espresso would be chocolatey, how a certain type of coffee bean would be chocolatey. So think of a little bit of Kahlua, which is really on point. Immediately upon smelling this, I was sold on, wow, I'm smelling the inside of a box of chocolates. So much that I'm even getting those specific chocolates that have the raspberry mousse inside, that fluffy mousse, and going off of that, a marshmallow swirl. We're building that Rocky Road Sunday, And to top it off, Take that Sunday and just drizzle a, a little bit of ruby port on the top of that Sunday, just to enhance and bring out the berry notes that I was picking up on this candle. Ben and Jerry's Cherries Garcia, the black cherry, the darker chocolate. If you've ever walked around a cigar humidor, it's the vanilla flavored cigars. They smell so good. A little bit of the actual sweet tobacco that kind of has this sun-dried raisin aroma to it to begin with. It's also flavored or dipped in this vanilla flavoring. It really is a little additional surprise. This truly is a decadent candle. Fatso Sweet Scrumptious Surprise by Erie Candle. I would take that any day, including Valentine's Day, Fatso. We're gonna move on to candle number six. <laughs> 
Slim's Giant Gushing Gummies. Slim, this is the clown with the, the horrifying laugh. He's got those human cocoon balloons in his hand and gushing gummies. Well, I don't remember any gushing gummies in the film. Let's sniff and see what we get. <laughs> so, nostalgia city all of the way. I mean, this is what I remember as far as candy as a child. I loved the sour. I loved the tart, the mouth puckering sensation of malic acid and citric acid. That sensation that made the corners of your jowls hurt just a little bit. This is a sour candy. For a second, I'm thinking a little bit of Gushers fruit snacks, but this is far too sour for that. Gummy worms, Sour Patch Kids, Sweet Tarts, you name it. The more sour, the better. With that said, there is that gelatinous, pectin-rich, very sweet candy fruit. This predominantly, for me, is a red fruit forward scent. Strawberry, cherry, but even red currant and rhubarb, even though rhubarb's not a fruit, but it still has those red fruit qualities and it's a little bit spicy. But emotionally, where this candle is taking me, other than childhood, <clears throat> I was not crying. Not Emotionally, where this is taking me, other than childhood, is that enchantment under the sea dance. That's right. Homecoming, prom, uh, that big bowl of punch is what I'm trying to say. All of that fruit that I mentioned, the red fruit, tons of citrus, little lemon lime, pixie stick action, tangerine uh, powdered substance, tang, throw some of that in there. Tons of ice cubes because this is really refreshing. And just to make it a little bit more sour, let's add some of those gummy worms. The, the granulated sugar with the malic acid, citric acid coating that uh, makes those things zing. Because zing, this candle does. And your children, they're going to love it. Warheads. Yes, warheads. Sour rainbow belts, spree candy, that weird sour stuff that used to come in a test tube. Let's throw in lemon heads because we do get that lemon essence. Not just the lemon juice, but a little bit of that lemon zest that rounds out the fruit and candy flavor aroma. Let's get it right. And I'd be lying if I said this is not recalling memories of things like Capri Sun or anything tropical juice, the high sea. You get where I'm going with this. This candle is going to speak to a very specific generation of people. After these messages, we'll be right back. Myself included in all of the commercials were promoting all of these candies, juices, fruit flavored snacks that they would tell you to consume and it would make you Bonkers watermelon with an extra fruity middle. Psychedelically happy inside, kaleidoscopically happy inside, if we can use that word. Cherry, cherry chapstick, cherry flavored chapstick. So you know what? Take that crystal bowl with that punch and pop that bowl into a microwave and set it for five minutes and back away back away. Let that get nuked for five minutes. Things are going to get serious real soon. All of that sugar, all of that fruit, it's going to turn into this homogenous blob. Every one of you watching this screen, look out. The most horrifying monster will be oozing into this theater. From another world or from outer space. And it's going to, it's going to take over the countryside. Saturday morning commercial ball of goodness. It's definitely nostalgic, definitely a little bit dangerous, but this is a bloody red, fruity, and sour, sour candle. Giant gushing gummies. That is one for the commercial break for Pee Wee's Playhouse. Whew. Let's move on to candle number seven. Shorty's Banana Scream Pie. Shorty is the one who will knock your block off in the film. If you've seen it. It's got to be banana, right? 
That is incredibly intense. Does this smell like authentic bananas? Yeah, yeah, why not, you know? banana chips, banana peel, overly ripe bananas sitting on the kitchen table, but let's not fool ourselves, not for a moment. This is banana candy. This is, this is taking it to the edge. And I mean it, the edge. We're at like a McDonald's pool of balls, only instead of balls, there's banana runs candy. Just try to run with me here. We're standing on the edge. That glossy, high shine, high sheen, crescent-shaped yellow banana candy, and you've been pushed, you've been pushed. You're sinking deeper and deeper into these banana pellets. You're trying to fish your, your way out, but there's something pulling me down, always something pulling me down, and it's that warm banana Laffy Taffy, that banana monster. Oh man, it's pulling me down. And this has suddenly become a double dare physical challenge of banana Pez candies and banana now and later chews. There is a splash of Dole pineapple juice, or for Disneyland fans, the Dole Whip, that frozen dessert. And that pineapple, what it's doing is, is brightening up this banana. Bananas don't have that acidity, but the pineapple is, is raging with acidity. So that rounds out the fruit flavor, but it also enhances that candy aspect to the candle. And on the savory side, because who said this wasn't savory? I, I didn't say it. Fried plantains, caramelized uh, plantains, banana fosters people. Little flambe action, cooking with flame cooking with fire. Imagine a mound of that banana's foster. Let's coat that with vanilla wafer cookies. A little bit of that golden soft vanilla crunch and tons of whipped cream. Or heck, let's just go for the meringue. Not moringu, meringue. In all honesty, when uh, I smell this. I still smell banana bread. This is like your grandmother's banana bread if she made good banana bread. And she was making it only she, she was fresh out of bananas and all she had was banana candy. But she made it happen. Gramps, Nani, she made it happen. She made that banana bread out of banana candy. This is truly a banana scream pie. It is a pie, it is savory days worth of banana aromatics, but only in a candy-esque way. This seems like a, a dessert fit for a clown. Shorty's banana scream pie. Whew. Let's move on to the last but not least, the last candle, candle number eight, Jumbo's Bursting Blue Bonanza. Snow cone in hand, flower upon his breast, shooting some blueness onto his icy nest. Blue, I can do blue. I'm down with some bursty blue. Mama's in the papas. All right, let's slow things down, people. Let's have a talk. What is the flavor of blue? What is the aromatic profile of blue? When we think about blue flavoring, what is it? I bet a very specific berry comes to mind. Is it the Rupus leucodermis? That's not the one. How about white bark raspberry? No. How about the black raspberry? Isn't that just a blackberry? Every child in the world knows this berry by the name of the blue raspberry. Oh yes, that, that blue raspberry. I don't know about you, but when I think about blue raspberry, I think, gee, that's the berry where the unicorns come from. But it's very much a real berry. It's just not blue. It's this magical, whimsical, Willy Wonka-esque flavor that's been around since the 70s. Arguably, it made its debut in the early 70s in two different forms. The flavor ice pop, one of those, and the blue raspberry icy slushy. One synonymous with summer times and pools, the other synonymous with that best beverage you could possibly ever consume inside a movie theater. You see, in the early 70s, they were looking for a new flavor. Not only were they looking for a new flavor, they were looking for a new color. There was just too much red, cherry, strawberry, raspberry. Where are the purples? 
<clears throat> the purples. They put in that blue food dye, number one, and they said, have at it. And they ran with it. And I know what you're thinking. Why didn't they just promote blueberry beverages, popsicles, and candies? We all love blueberry. I love blueberry. It gave me my thrill. But the thing is, what is one adjective that we think of when we think of blueberry? Sweet. Well, the blue raspberry, it's sweet. But the acidity levels, all the way here. When a fruit ripens, the sugar levels increase and the acidity levels drop. But that's not what we wanted. We wanted something that was bursting with citric acid and malic acid. There's only so much sweetness you can put into a soda pop or candy. Having that amount of tartness, that ratio of acidity to sweetness, we wanted that bombacity and we got it and it never went away. They slapped on the name blue. From that day forth, the flavor of blue changed forever. But what does it taste like? What does it smell like? It actually tastes a whole lot like an underripe cherry. When we have a bag of assorted candy and we dip our hand in and we pull out a blue raspberry flavored candy, it's always a fantastic moment, is it not? And this candle is oozing with blue, just like those translucent tubes of toothpaste filled with blue gel candy, the blue raspberry push pops, the ring pops, all of those staples of childhood candy. But check this out. Do you remember Hershey's Flintstones push up pops, the little cylindrical tubes that had that creamy, very distinct, like sorbet, sherbet, soft serve ice cream, gelato, all wrapped up together. I'm saying that because this candle is creamy. It is whipped cream. It is cool whip in your face. It is extreme. This is not just the frozen blue raspberry treat, but there is this coolness factor. When I smell this, I feel like I'm getting little goosebumps. I can feel the comfort of the cold inside my chest on a hot summer day. It is refreshing. So why don't we do this? Close your eyes. Come with me, people. Come on. Run with me here. Let's take a stroll to our local 7-Eleven. Let's go around and push those glass doors open and feel the AC on our skin. Grab one of those huge big gulp plastic goblets and go to the Slurpee machine and pump her up. Fill it with the blue raspberry Slurpee, but not all the way. Save, reserve just a little bit of space because we're gonna need that in just a bit. But here's the thing, the machine is on the fritz and it's injecting twice the recommended amount of syrup into our Slurpee, but we're okay with that. We're always okay with that. Let's head down the street and maybe let's hit up a ballpark where we're gonna order four or five blue raspberry snow cones and maybe slip the vendor uh, a pack of fruit straws as bribery to get a few extra pumps of the blue raspberry syrup on top of our shaved ice. Let's, let's retreat. Let's have a seat. Let's reach into our pocket and grab that unopened package of Jolly Rancher blue raspberry candies and crush them up, crumble them up. I don't know, bring a nutcracker. You figure out those details, but take all of the ingredients and fill that long, tall Sally big gulp cup to the rim. And then we're not done. We're going to take that can of Ready Whip and we're going to spiral it just like this in conical form. And we're going to build that towering inferno of whipped cream. And then magically out of the sky, pluck a plump blue raspberry that's so juicy and overripe and place it just right there on top. Just like that. There you go. No, you take this. I got one right here. I got one right here. That one's for you. Just be warned that a dessert like that is for professionals only. Uh, don't, don't overdo it if you're not prepared. And speaking of that, this candle is for candle enthusiasts only because it truly is that nostalgic trip to all of those wonderful, exciting childhood memories of candies, ballparks, snow cones, circuses, carnivals, fairs, you name it good times to remember, good times to be had. Jumbos, a bursting blue bonanza. Blue tongues all day, people, all day long. 
Look, I wanna give a huge heartwarming thank you to Erie Candle Company for supplying all of these candles. They didn't have to give them to me, but they did. And I truly appreciate the support. And I wanna thank all of you for joining in on this epic, aromatic, nostalgic journey. It's always a trip, and this one, no exception. Eight different candles that are going to accomplish eight completely different things. You just remember that a candle isn't just home fragrance. It's not just to make your house smell pretty. Your living room smell beautiful. Your bathroom, to deodorize it, no. Candles can tell us stories, they can recall memories, and if we allow them to, they can serve as a portal to let us escape and travel to places that we've never been. That's what it's all about. That's where the enthusiasm comes from. I hoped a little bit of mine rubbed off on yours. Uh, I think that's it, folks. But before we go, just make sure all the dogs are safe. Get them in the house. Close the windows, lock all the doors, check all the dark corners in the house, and keep your eyes on the sky. Because you never can tell. There just might be a clown in your town. We'll see you soon.